I am Rachel Meliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly, and I'm here with Seth Walker, uh, engineering manager of performance at Etsy. Thank you for joining me. Sure. So the key component of your talk was transparency. Can you talk a little bit about why transparency has been so critical at uh, Etsy? Sure. Uh, so Etsy is a marketplace, um, and all of our uh, members are very engaged in how the site operates uh, with good reason. They're all small businesses trying to make a living on the site. Sure. Uh, so we found that using transparency helps in building and maintaining trust with them. So that just explains why we were really comfortable sharing our performance data. Mm -hmm. We already had a, uh, an idea of transparency in the company. Right. Uh, but what we've seen through sharing our performance data is that it really motivated us to create improvements and to show progress in sure. uh, making the site faster. Uh, so that's great. That's you know one of those things that we would Definitely. want to do as a performance team. Absolutely. Uh, I think a, another aspect of it that is maybe even stronger is that it just sends a really strong signal that performance is something that we take very seriously. Uh, and that's a signal that is reflected both internally to the engineering team as mm -hmm. a whole. They can point to these uh, site performance reports and say, yeah, look, this is something that we take seriously. Sure. Uh, but it's also a message to... Uh, any potential candidates who would want to come work at Etsy, that performance is something that we take seriously. Uh, I also think that transparency is just attractive in general to engineers. Agreed. So, um, yeah. It's a, you might as well embrace it, right? Right. <laughs> right. So, on that, following up on that point, a lot of uh, developers and teams are not so excited about transparency, mm. especially when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to them? Um, you know, to try to convince them that yeah. no, this is the way to go. You know, these are the things that I've yeah. seen yeah. because of this. Yeah. Yeah, I've certainly spoken to a few people who are hesitant to share their numbers because of embarrassment or whatever, sure. but I wonder how prevalent that is. I wonder if, I, I hope that maybe people just haven't got around to doing it yet. That is very um, possible. But uh, yeah, if you feel hesitant to share your numbers just because of embarrassment, I would say use that because if you're embarrassed about those numbers now and they're not improving, uh, this yes. might be a way to kick that, um, kick that into gear and get your numbers Absolutely. better. Absolutely. Uh, I'd also say that it's, it feels scary, but there's a lot of reasons to think it might not be so scary. Um, for most of the people that would be reading these numbers, uh, just single numbers, like the, you know, what does 400 milliseconds mean? What sure. does two seconds mean? There's no context. Exactly. Um, but everyone loves to hear 50% improvement. You know? That so is if so you, true. If you put it in the context of these are the numbers as they're progressing over time, we're working on it, we're making them go down. I think that's that would make people feel a little better about it. Right. I would imagine that the company culture plays a big piece in transparency, sure. and I know that we talked a lot about culture um, at Cultivate mm -hmm. the conference, which was really great. Yeah. Um, what, how do you encourage um, a culture of transparency? Sure. Uh, well, you know, culture is a lot about what you do, not necessarily what you say you do. Very so, true. Uh, you know, lead by action, I guess, and think about ways that you can be more transparent in your day-to-day -day activities. No, I uh, totally agree. Yeah. So, um, now a little bit future-looking. Mm -hmm. Where do you hope to see web performance and like, operations in the next few years? Sure. Uh, well, I, I think that one of the best things that's happened to the web in the last 10 years or so was uh, the emergence of libraries like jQuery, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of abstracted away the differences between browsers, sure. and then kind of a general trend towards standardization in browsers, mm -hmm. uh, which took a lot of the headache away from doing web development. Uh, and it feels a little bit to me like we're uh, reaching a new point of increased fragmentation, having to deal with like mobile versus desktop, totally. and then like just in, inside of mobile, all the different yep. operating systems, browsers, screen sizes. Um, and then in addition to that, I feel like there are a lot of uh, recommendations that we make as a web performance community mm -hmm. uh, that are kind of just making up for deficiencies in, say, the HTTP spec or browsers that haven't, features that haven't been implemented in browsers yet. Uh, so it's the sort of thing where we say, you should concatenate all your scripts and you should defer JavaScript, but that will totally be fixed by HTTP2 whenever right. that comes. Right. Uh, so it kind of feels like, we're asking developers to work at the wrong level of abstraction. Uh, it's just a little too low level, and I'm hoping that in the next few years, browsers, HTTP2, those sorts of things will sure. kind of smooth that over and let us worry about we'll more see, I important hope so. things. Right? <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining sure. me. Sure, that was really fun.